Well, hello again, I'm Mike Mazzalongo. This is the Bible Talk video blog. Uh, I'm gonna start a uh, short three-part series talking about recipes for success. Three recipes for success. And the first one I wanna talk about is a recipe for success for families. You know, one of the best things uh, at holiday time, Christmas, whatever uh, the season, uh, as far as our family is concerned, is getting together and enjoying a meal. Um, we're a French Canadian, our cultural background is French Canadian and Italian, so we love to eat Italian food and French Canadian food. And one of the best moments we have is when all the family, all the kids and the grandkids are together and we're enjoying that great cooking uh, that is part of our heritage and uh, culture. Um, lots of great recipes. Well, I want to share with you some recipes, not for food, but recipes for success. I call them Mazzalongo's Recipes for Success. And the first one of these I call a Recipe uh, for Good Families, Successful Families. You know, when they interview people who seem to have it all and they ask them what is really important to them, uh, by far the number one answer that they give is their family. Uh, not their uh, wealth, uh, not their power, not their fame. And this is because our families enable us to enjoy our wealth and our success, to share it and to rejoice uh, in it. You know, without families, it's very hard to enjoy the many blessings that we have in this country. I mean, just ask the many lonely, rich, powerful people who really feel their lack of family when they're all alone with just their money. So family is what everybody needs Family is what everybody wants, but not everybody has. For those fortunate enough to have relatives, here's a recipe for building and maintaining a successful family. Because you see, just having relatives doesn't mean that you, that you have a family. A lot of people have relatives, but they don't have a successful family. So let's, let's see if we can put together this, this successful family, what I call a family stew. A couple of ingredients that you have to have. First ingredients for a successful family, two parts devotion. Two parts devotion. Call it loyalty, commitment, family first, whatever. It simply means that each member of the family is equally devoted to the family they belong to. For example, husbands are devoted to wives and wives are devoted to husbands and children to parents and parents to children. Being devoted means that family comes before career, family comes before opportunity, even personal comfort. For example, it's a, it's a husband putting his wife before his business. It's a child honoring his parents instead of his friends. It's a mother giving up her goals to achieve the goals of her family. I think that everybody loves what family gives us, but that special joy costs us something, and the cost is devotion. So the first ingredient for a successful family, devotion. Number two, a mix of services. You know, what I enjoy most about family is watching each member of my family serve one another. A, a sister comforting her brother in a time of need, or a brother-in-law helping another one in the family move their furniture. Um, it's in this mix of mutual service that we learn to know and to love each other, and this love is the unseen substance of what we share. Receiving help and encouragement and giving the same creates this, this aroma of love that makes you want to be part of the family. And then a third ingredient for the successful family recipe, a sprinkling of patience and forgiveness. You know, the day will come when somebody will hurt somebody else in the family. It's inevitable. I mean, you can't put a bunch of people together to live in a house or to live as a family and not have somebody say or do something that offends or hurts somebody else. And when it does, let's, let's, let's not do what unsuccessful families do. You know, unsuccessful families, when there's a hurt, when there's an offense, you know what they do? Well, they'll gossip about it to one another. Or maybe they'll pick sides and start a fight. Or they'll pretend nothing happened and slowly grow cold towards one another. Or they'll sulk and they'll pout and they'll give everyone the silent treatment. Isn't that terrible? Have you ever had that in your family? You invite everybody over for Thanksgiving and someone says, well, is so-and-so going? Yeah, yeah, she's coming. Well, I won't go if she goes. You ever have that in your family? That's terrible. That's, that's not how to build a family. That's how to tear one apart. Or, or beat the other family up. 
Now, have I mentioned everybody's uh, method of uh, you know, unsuc unsuccessful families? Have I, have I touched on what, what you do in your family when something bad happens? You know, if we've already added some patience and forgiveness in the mix um, in advance, it'll preserve our family when these things happen. And there's a reason for this. For example, patience means that we understand and we accept that each one of us has faults. Each one of us in the family has weaknesses and sins. They're just different than the ones that, that I have. Um, a patient realizes that it's the sin, it's the weakness in me that you don't like. It's not, it's not the me. The thing that you don't like about me is not the core me. It's the things that I do which are wrong. It's the things that I do which show my weaknesses, which show my sins. Well, the beautiful thing about patience is that patient accepts that everyone, everyone does something. Everyone has weaknesses. Uh, everyone is doing their best uh, despite the problems that they have. And, and patience is willing to continue loving the other person because that's what we want when we mess up. I mean, isn't that what we want? When I mess up, when I do something wrong, when I speak out of turn or say something stupid, the thing I want is for other people to keep loving me despite the fact that I've made a mistake or that I've done something uh, sinful. Successful families keep loving us even when we're not at our best. And then you know, I said the, the ingredients, patience and forgiveness, you know, a sprinkling of these. Why forgiveness? Well, because the best solution to any conflict is forgiveness. When I forgive, I neutralize anger. I, I uh, repair broken relationships. I rebuild trust. I express my love in its most godly form. You know, successful families remain that way, not through compromise, not through arbitration or bargaining. That, that's, that's what unions do. That's what the government does. But in a successful family, um, people resolve their differences, their offenses, their mistakes through patience and through forgiveness. I know this is true because it is how God maintains peace and harmony and love in His family, which is the church. And the church family is very much like our natural families. So I know that each of you want uh, your own families to succeed as I want my family to succeed. And so if you want that, remember the family stew recipe for success. Number one, two parts personal devotion, a mix of active service and a sprinkling of patience and forgiveness. And uh, put all these things together, continually stir with love and laughter and the successful family will be yours. Okay, so that's part one of our three-part uh, series on uh, uh, successful families. We're going to talk about successful careers and successful spiritual life. Well, that's it for this time on the video blog. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can write me at mike at uh, bibletalk.tv. We'll see you next time. God bless you.